Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts, like the chart behind me, which is of Highcroft Mining, ticker symbol HYMC. And so I am recording this on Monday, September 16th in the evening after Highcroft closed at a price of $2.64, being down a little over 1% on the day. Uh, and yeah, I just wanted to follow up on Highcroft because it recently went on a pretty massive rampage, hitting a low on September 11th of 195, and then going up to a high as of today of, let's see, the high was $2.74, going up 40%, over 40% in the past four trading days. So pretty massive move there. And yeah, I wanted to go over it because I'm wondering if it's going to be hitting $3 this week, if it might be going to 4 and or if it might be pulling back before it heads up that way. And so, yeah, I've got, you know, a few Fibonacci retracements up here, as you can see. And uh, really, like, I'm just going to go through these real quick. One is this red one going from the low here from June 26th up to this high from July 17th. And that low of $2.20 was retested over here. We did break below it, hitting a new low here of 209 on August 9th, so actually just you know a few days after that massive drop in the markets on August 5th, when everything gapped down, Highcroft actually continued to consolidate right around that price, dipping lower and then moving up, dipping lower again before we got this nice rally from 195. But then from the way down, we have some retracements to the upside. And from this one, moving from the highs from July 17th down to that low of August 9th, the golden pocket here was retested when we hit a high on August 20th of $2.62, really just getting a wick up to the 618, not getting up to the 65% level before pulling back, breaking below 209 as I had mentioned. And then from that retracement, we are basically right around that high from August 20th at 262, being you know just a couple pennies above it, and actually having closed on Friday the 13th at a price of $2.67. So above that golden pocket there, above the 65% retracement from this orange one here, so that was at 264 about, is that 65% level. Did close above it, but then we opened above and closed actually, you know, right on it or technically above it because it's 263.6. And so, yeah, I'm wondering if this is going to continue to the upside. I was thinking over the weekend that it would just because, you know, there's all of this volume behind it. The MACD does look like it just flipped green and does look pretty strong. And so I was surprised to see a 1% pullback today. And so I'm wondering if this is just, you know, taking a little break, a little bit of a cool off before continuing higher, either to the 786 here at 275 or this 100% retracement up to the high hit on July 17th of 293, or maybe it's surpassing $3 getting up to this 1618 at 303. And so, you know, so I, I can see it going multiple ways. You know, one is that it consolidates here, forms a bull flag, and then continues higher. Or tomorrow on Tuesday, it continues higher. But with the FOMC meeting on Wednesday, I'm very curious to see what happens with Highcroft because I feel like a lot of things could be pulling back, and I think Highcroft could be one of those things, so good to be cautious about that, especially with this gap here at $2.26. That was the close on September 12th, so on Thursday of last week, did gap up from that into the 13th, and so that is a level we could be retesting. And I also do have this green uptrend here, which we have broken below on multiple occasions, but we did not go as low as I thought we might around you know 180 or coming down to around 175. Uh, so we didn't do that, hitting a low of 195. But then taking a bigger step back, we can see where that green uptrend originates from. It looks like there was a one for 10 reverse split 
on November 15th of last year. And so that was the low of 163. And the other pivot point was the low from March 1st, which was 187. That's how I draw that trend line. And it does look like it, you know, showed some approximate support around here. So maybe we would be pulling back to that. And so the thing that stands out to me as being most realistic for this and, you know, with that being said, it's quite possible I'm going to be wrong about this, uh, but I could see this forming an inverse head and shoulders pattern where we have the head here, we have a left shoulder here, and we have not yet formed the right shoulder yet, but I could see that as being a very nice pathway to beyond $3 a share. Right now, with this candle from today, the 16th, and with the FOMC coming up, I could see this pulling back. I think that, you know, um, this, you know, although the MACD here does look pretty green, uh, the pretty big drop in the volume, I think, you know, we're just waiting to see what happens on Wednesday. And so with that being said, I think this could be pulling back, forming a right shoulder. And so I'm just going to draw that up here. Uh, I think from the low of July 30th, and then connecting that to the pivot point. Actually, I'm gonna do it to the pivot point over here from the high of today, uh, which was, as I had mentioned before, 274. I'm just gonna make sure that's drawn just right there. Lock that into place, make it a little bit thicker, a lot thicker in purple, because that's how I like to draw up the uh, head and shoulders patterns for some reason with the necklines being purple. And so from that, you know, I could see a pullback to either fill this gap or to this uptrend, maybe pulling back to around 230 or 40, maybe at 226. And, uh, you know, maybe coming down to uh, 220, uh, this prior low over here, you know, that would all be, in my view, a valid inverse head and shoulder pattern. And so with that being said, that would be a retracement or a pullback of about 14%, maybe coming down to almost 18%. Uh, so that is something to be considerate of moving forward. Uh, but from that though, one of the nice things about this, especially because you know the low was hit not only on September 3rd being a low of 195, but also on the 11th, 195. And so from here, moving up to the neckline, it's a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna take a measurement there so we can get this measured move kind of mapped out. Let's see, uh, you know, I'll move that in just one second. First, I'm just gonna draw up where this right shoulder might be. So let's say it comes down to that line, doesn't come all the way down to uh, fill that gap, but gets close. And so let's say, that is you know what we're working with here and i'm just going to make that a little bit thicker so we can see it better and so let's say we test the neckline up here that would be around october 8th after pulling back to test that uptrend around the end of september so if we do get a pullback in the second half of this week, maybe around the FOMC. If we do see a pullback, maybe by the end of the month, maybe there's a great dip buy around 235, and then it starts to move up to test that neckline. And if it does break around uh, you know, this time, price could be going up to around $3.60, maybe $3.50, maybe getting all the way up to $4 a share. Who knows? But I do think that with the momentum that we have seen, whether that's in the volume, in the MACD, that the RSI is still below 70, I think we could just be seeing a cool off and maybe a continuation. Maybe we're just waiting for the FOMC and then this takes off going above three and maybe getting up to $4 a share, maybe by the end of October, who knows? And you know, I could definitely see that happening in a variety of ways, whether that's consolidating here for a little while before breaking higher after forming a bull flag, or just taking a little pause here, continuing higher, or pulling back to form this right inverse shoulder and then moving higher. Maybe by November, the end of November, uh, price is around $4 a share. So I do think that looks pretty good. Uh, but one thing I did want to mention because the options are coming up, the options expiration for the month of September on the 20th, I did want to pull up Max Payne, which I should have over here. And it does look like Max Payne for this week ending on September 20th is $3 a share. So price could be going up to that 1618 level. 
uh, you know, by the end of this week, but it also might be closing a little bit lower. And a another reason why I could see that is because if I do come back to here and I look at the uh, expiration for October 18th, we can actually see that it is $2 a share. So right now, it does seem like we could be seeing a pullback, but maybe that is... Uh, you know, after we get a rally higher. And with that being said, this neckline could be adjusted. I'm just going to move this pivot point to be over here. And then, you know, we could adjust this to wherever that high point would be, take that measurement, and maybe that would be lining up with $4. And actually, I can do that here. Let's see, we go from that low of 195 straight up to that neckline. And let's say uh, we do get a move up to right around $3 a share before we start to get a pullback. And then we get a break just like before after the second week of October. And price could definitely be coming up to $4 a share. But maybe it takes a couple months, maybe three months before this move to play out. So, you know, I think that there's a lot of upside for Highcroft, whether that's to $3 or to $4 a share, but I do think there could be a cool off and that would represent, let's see, uh, like I said before, a 15 to maybe 20% down move. So good to be cautious of that, but good to be prepared for the upside after we see, uh, you know, some consolidation or a little bit of a pullback. Uh, so, you know, I would look for dip buys down here if it does pull back, uh, but I would also look for, you know, more upside like three, like four, and maybe beyond. But you know, those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and make sure you like this video for more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching.